Hello everyone, welcome to Code with Femi. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I've got an amazing professional with me on the channel today. Um, the last time we actually recorded, it didn't go so well, <laughs> but <laughs> we opened this recording will actually go very well. And um, yeah, um, please, Tenas, can you please introduce yourself? And thank you for joining us. Cool, thanks. Hi, Femi. Um, I'm Tenas. Um, I've worked with Femi in the past in a, on, a, on the same project. Um, I've been an independent contractor, uh, freelancer, developer for, uh, uh, for uh, how, much, how long is it now? Uh, about 11 years. Amazing. Um, 10, 11 years, yeah. Um, Amazing. Commercially, 10. Um, I've been coding a bit before that. Um, I I do, I'm specialized in front end um, UI stuff, but I've been busy with some integration and full stack work also as of late. Um, uh, family man, got a very busy, very energetic family <laughs> behind my back most of the time. Um, yeah, that's me. Amazing, amazing. Um, so, um, We've got this actual PowerPoint that um, we've actually just, um, you know, come up with to guide us through the actual um, session. And um, there's some questions there that I would just like to ask. Um, the first one is, um, which is more around, you know, like what is the dip difference between, you know, being a permanent um, versus you being a, you know, an independent contractor? Because, you know, from your own point of view, from your own perspective as an independent contractor, what would you say is actually the difference um, between these two? So I, I want to caveat this entire discussion by saying I've got it. I had a very unique journey um, on how I got to where I'm working the way that I am. Um, I think it's different for every person, though. Um, I don't know many other independent contractors or developers, to be honest. So um, I really just kind of worked my way um, into the um, into this way of working over the, um, the last few years. Um, and then also, I think there's a clear difference for me um, okay. between an independent contractor and a, and a freelancer, or at least the, the lines blur there a little bit. So um, I, I, I would say a freelancer is someone that um, th does a job by job basis, um, possibly delivering um, websites or projects or plugins or whatever on a very regular basis. Yeah. Um, fixed, fixed contract delivery based um, work. And then um, a contractor um, would be someone I've, in my perspective that um, th gets a job with a, a customer and sticks for a while. Mm. Um, so I think from like a six month to a 12 month and possible a renewable contract. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so if we take freelancing and contracting into the on the same side and um, permanent em employment on the other, I think the uh, um, the the primary things is the legal stuff. Um, okay. Well, that's the first thing that comes to mind. So, as an employer, um, you have a contracting which um, um, it follows the ba basic conditions of Employment Act, yeah. um, the African uh, um, rule set for for being employed. Um, uh, you get benefits um, um, very much so over being um, um, an independent contractor where you get sick leave, um, where you're paid for sick leave, where you're um, paid for paid leave. Um, and also the, the work that you do is um, covered by the company, if mm. I can call it that. So if, yeah. if you are a um, sole proprietor, you have to make sure you are covered legally for any work that you do. Um, by the way, you set up your contracts um, uh, with, with the possibly have a, um, a, a, a company in, um, with, do, through which you do your work. Okay. And then the other thing is like I'm um, doing your own administration, um, uh, yeah. tax stuff. Um, yeah. Um, so you're, you're like your, your own admin. You're like an administrator. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to like keep your books, make sure everything is on, on point. <laughs> like there's no know. like you wait, you know, you rely on the company to help you file your tax and send you the, uh, is it IRP5? Yeah. Um, you do all of that yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you certainly need to make sure that you have time for work and you have yeah. time for admin. Yeah. Um, uh, but you need your own gear. Um, uh, well, in, in many of many instances, and you need to have your own computer. Yeah. And then also your, your reputation. Um, that's something that 
works a little bit different when you work for yourself and also selling yourself to some degree. Um, mm. If you want a job, if you want a tender, if you want a contract, you need to be able to t um, prove to someone um, on a more regular basis that, that you are the person to, to be contracted or to be used. Um, uh, certainly when you have an interview for permanent employment, you also have to do that. But that's mm. kind of like a, a, a once-off thing and then, then you kind of... Um, sorted for the time that you're employed, whereas yeah. with um, freelancing or contracting, you do it on a more regular basis. Yeah, so so it's like you put it on different hats, if if I can put it that way, where you can yeah. put an hat as a salesperson and say, "Dude, I'm gonna like make this amazing software for you." <laughs> like uh, you need to, you know, you need to put, get me on board. Like yeah. Yeah. And also, you have to like be versatile as well in terms of your, yeah. you know, your skills. You can't just be, um, you know, like limited. You need to be versatile. Um, that's really cool, amazing. Um, so the next question we have on here is: it's more around. I think you've actually touched on it um, a little bit, but I just want us to dig a little bit deeper. Is like, you know, what is it? You know, like being you being an independent contractor, like how do you like how do you feel like, you know, and even your engagements as well? So specifically in the software engineering space, um, uh, we have a, a developer market. So we um, there's there's more work than there are developers. So mm. it, it does definitely make for an interesting space. Um, uh, we are wanted to quite to quite an degree, and then the the risk of being an independent contractor might be a bit less than in some other industries. Mm. Um, so uh, that that certainly plays a role as a um, software engineer um, as an independent contractor. Mm. Um, but so in general, um, you kind of get to set a bit more of your own terms. Um, okay. <laughs> the, the cliche of being your own boss um that's certainly a, a different aspect um some days it's frustrating as hell mm. um being that person um that that isn't always taken care of by someone or um uh, things are done for you as we mentioned in the previous question yeah um but also you, you setting your own terms to some degree um, th th it comes a bit later, I would say. In the beginning, mm. you you do a lot of work that um, uh, to get in. Yeah. Um, it's it's more frequent. Um, uh, more frequently, you would take a job that you wouldn't possibly take later, mm. and you might take a few jobs at the same time. Um, but as the journey goes on, um, you get into a cadence um, where where you take a you might skip a job that where there's alarm bells. You get to okay. know the alarm bells. Okay. Um, and and then you settle into a groove which is comfortable for you with your lifestyle, possibly your family. Um, but but yeah, I love it. I I don't I don't know if I would, uh, <laughs> would I would struggle get, getting back into a permanent employment space. Uh, I've, I've been doing it as a independent contractor I think for seven years. Um, about three, four years after I started going. Nice, nice. Um, so that actually leads us to the next question, which is why did you decide to become an independent contractor? Like what, you know, how did you do it? Because, you know, <laughs> like switching is not a f is not that easy, you know, in terms of job security, you know, I'm permanent, um, you know, I'm secured and all of that. And like, how mm -hmm. did you take on that, you know, bold step to say, I'm going to become a contractor now and, you know, just deal with my stuff myself? So I, I genuinely consider myself as a passenger during the seat of life. Um, okay. I, I, I didn't go on day one when I started learning coding or, or when I was younger, like when I'm 30, I want to do this and do that. <laughs> um, I, I, I was a musician before, I, a, a career musician before I yeah. started coding professionally. Nice. Um, so I think there was just a point in time where the agency that I, I had started out with um, that they grew in a way that um, didn't sit comfortably, and they're still going today. Love them, love the um, the, the owner, and we still have a good chat every now and then. Yeah. Um, but at the time, um, it didn't grow in the way that I felt comfortable with. Okay. And um, and they fortunately were willing to give me some contractual work for for uh, quite some time when I left. So I think when you make the move, I think the first thing to consider is. Do you potentially have some work mm. the day you start? Because mm. um, uh, I, I think I gave a three month notice. I, I wanted to have a good relationship with the company when I left or the agency. 
Um, so I think the the second or third day after I gave notice, I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I do? But um, <laughs> but I was very fortunate. Um, uh, the from the week from the Friday that I stopped being an employee to the Monday, I continued with work that I was busy with, um, working with people I knew, um, great people. And um, I've, I've fortunately not had very um, quiet times. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been um, busy um, most of the, the last seven years. Um, so, yeah, I think that the decision of the, the, there's quite a few things to consider. Um, how many dependents do you have? What mm. industry are you in? Mm. Uh, how long have you been doing it? How, how, many net, how big is your network? Yeah. Uh, there's quite a few things to consider. But I think the primary thing is, for me, it would have been scary had I left and I had mm. no job, that, no code to write mm. the day I became an independent contractor. So mm. I, I had that. And um, look, we certainly had a few, uh, we discussed this for a few weeks and months before um, as a family we said, okay, it's time. Um, but um, yeah, well, when the when decision was made, it was 100% go. And it amazing. Went well. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Okay, nice. Um, you've also touched on this already, but I think we should actually just um, speak more about, you know, what are the clear advantages, you know, if you, if you would, you know, um, compare yourself to a permanent person, like what would you say is your advantage over, uh, you know, a, a permanent um, employee or a permanent contractor? So when I was young, I was incredibly shy. Um, and over time, as, uh, as I gained some confidence in what I did, um, I, I stopped uh, I, um, I enabled myself to negotiate um, mm. some terms on contracts because um, when you start I, it's a fairly we, we often speak of imposter syndrome within the um, software space um, as you know we don't have clear like governing bodies saying listen um, uh, you're at this level mm. um, you need to do things this way mm. um, and you don't typically always study I'm I've not study for um i have no formal education whatsoever mm. i think i don't i i finished then at seven or grade nine and then i left school um so mm. um it, being self-taught um uh, there's quite a bit of imposter syndrome and mm. um as you gain confidence um, and you do it for a while you get to negotiate your contracts and i think that's um, that's one of the clear advantages, um, or at least it enables the advantages of contracting. So then you get to where you can specify some, specify some flexi time for yourself. Um, this is in contracting, freelancing. Um, uh, well, let's do the contracting. So you can specify some flexi time then. Yep. You get your children, if, if you set up your world like that, if you have children, uh, maybe it's your wife or your girlfriend that you see more. <laughs> Um, uh, you can potentially specify some hybrid remote work. Um, nice. I've, I've been doing remote work for seven years now. So, um, uh, since I started, so, uh, nice. I, I have a bit of a up on some of you guys there. Uh, <laughs> um, that, that's certainly been a benefit. And then also, I, I think I mentioned this, but just that confidence of going to bed at night. Um, well, this is a pro and a con, but, mm. uh, knowing you're waking up as your own boss. Mm. Um, no one looking over your shoulder. Mm. Um, look, uh, we've been speaking about the software industry specifically, yeah, and yes. it, it is a very. I think you 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 might agree. It's it's a very com It's a comfortable industry. It's one that leads things like mental health awareness. Yes. Um, we we don't have a, a scary scary job mm. um, compared to some other industries. Mm. Um, yeah. So. Uh, um, but yeah, it, it, it feels good to be your own, being at, in the driver's seat. Um, yeah. For me, that that's some, that's good. And then being a freelancer, I think the the thrill and the challenge of um, well, if, again, if this is your appetite, yeah. um, the thrill and the challenge of of having frequent changes in jobs, yeah. um, delivering as you said you would, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, in the freelancing space, and then also possibly having some time extended time off between jobs if if you've set yourself up and um you're able to find to um uh, to finance it that way yeah. if you've done two jobs and you can take a three-week holiday then why not nice <laughs> amazing um the next question is the opposite which is you know what are the disadvantages what is like oh <laughs> like the pain points 
So I think that that's a little bit more at the way at the start of this discussion. Yeah. Um, the things like sick leave and paid leave, uh, th those are tricky. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so as you grow, if you do this a few years, you build up little reserves for things like that. Mm -hmm. But realistically, there, there's so much in life <laughs> to, to build up for uh, like car services. Um, um, mm -hmm. Those we all battle with, but if, if it's that, plus sick leave, plus paid leave. Um, it was certainly the first few years um, when it got to the, the paid leave, if our family wanted to go on holiday, taking two weeks off, it's like, sheesh, that month was uh, enough. But it was very, that didn't work out that well in the first few years. Um, but then you build up reserves and then, then it's okay. So that's not great. Um, mm. um, something that's come around, which I felt a little bit in the beginning is, um, having credit extended to you, yeah. Um, if you wanted to buy a house or a car, um, mm. in the beginning it wasn't that great. Um, mm. but over the last few years, I think well, in our, within our country, I found that um, if you are able to provide it, um, to uh, demonstrate a steady income, um, then uh, the pay slip isn't as needed as it was, I think, mm. ten years ago. Um, mm. and then also uh, camaraderie, um, uh, being part of a I say this with great reservation, but being part of a work family, yeah, um, uh, celebrating things um, with people that you feel are um, long term contributing to to the same vision or the same passion within a company or, or a space or organization, yeah. um, you, you there there is a um, some aspect of being alone. Mm. Um, um, you need to make sure you take care of yourself in that way. Mm. Um, and then with the remote work that we mentioned as an advantage in the previous one, um, you you typically also find yourself working at times that you shouldn't be working, um, especially mm. in the beginning, switching off is difficult. Mm. Um, uh, I did this thing in, for a little while where I worked all day at the office, uh, at the home office, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then at, at three o'clock I went out to the mm. coffee shop, had a coffee, did the last two hours of work and came home. Because that come up, that come home thing really does just twitch your mind back to, okay, your day is done now. Mm. If mm. I walk out here at five, I'm probably still coding something <laughs> in my head. In your brain. <laughs> all the way down to the family. <laughs> like, uh, I'm, I'm still in like code speak in my mind. Uh, uh, um, uh, not, I'm not bad yet. <laughs> so... Um, uh, that's certainly something to take care of for yourself. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do this, um, uh, you need to switch off. Mm. Um, there's, the, the, there's this uh, this guilt-ridden thing that I see on LinkedIn often about, um, especially in Silicon Valley, people like advocating for this always on, mm. um, uh, always going. Um, mm. Hustle culture, I think, is um, what's sometimes mentioned. Um, uh, that it, it gets tough if, if you feel like you must always be on and mm. always be networking and always be working. Mm. And that's not healthy for anyone. Man. No, it's not. We are all humans <laughs> and we need to like recover, you know, recuperate and <laughs> be healthy because that's how we can be productive, actually. Um, yeah, nice, man. Thank you so much for this insight. Um, the next question is more around, you know, how could one manage their time when dealing with, you know, multiple clients, you know, you could get greedy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you have like 50 clients and how do you really manage and also like keep your reputation? Yeah, so uh, there's uh, a few sides to this. If you are delivering websites, if that's mm -hmm. what you are doing, um, then it's important to, in the contract, indicate, in discussion, indicate that you are delivering a website mm -hmm. and then that is where the relationship or that project stops. Mm -hmm. If you do need assistance, you, you obviously um, um, communicate the benefits of having someone on retainer or something. Uh, websites, I, I think... For, for instance, in the e-commerce space, often I think um, people feel when the website is done, you're done, um, but and it, the website runs itself. But um, that's not always the case. Often you need a little tweak here, a new payment gateway activated. Mm -hmm. um, there's all these nitty-gritty things, keeping the software updated, mm -hmm. um, ensuring the backups are running. Mm. Um, being available if there is an exploit that, that ran on your site or um, uh, someone um, hacked your site. 
Mm. Um, it's it's scary if you are a business owner relying mm. on this income and your your website isn't performing. So mm. if as a developer, as a contractor or a freelancer, yeah. you want to communicate to the client that they need to engage you long term mm. if they want you long term. Mm. Otherwise, mm. it's a deliverable and the deliverable is done. Because yeah. I think this is what trips us up often is if you add a project and you start with the next one, we're running two, maybe three <laughs> alongside mm -hmm. each other, and one of them take longer, yeah. or the, the customer um, expects you that you've onboarded for life. Mm -hmm. There was this tendency of 15 years ago, if I, if I could call it that, 15 to 10 years ago, where um, you, when you did a website, the, the, the customer or the client believes you are now their guy. Yes. Like, or your, your when there's any job. problem, you are the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that is certainly not the case, but it must be communicated by us, I feel. Um, hmm. Yeah, um, we deliver a highly technical product to, to a client that isn't typically technically um, uh, advanced. Um, and uh, we need to have them make them understand why they're paying a lot, what they're getting and what they're not getting. Hmm. Um, so managing time, being very upfront about what you're responsible for. Mm -hmm. um, when you're, if it's more in the contracting space where you, um, we're not, uh, um, where it's maybe a time and material contract where you're not necessarily delivering something, but you're on a, a, a long term engagement where you're um, uh, delivering code every day. Yeah. Um, maybe in a team, um, if you are deciding to try two contracts, it's important to indicate to both um, parties when you will be available. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can't be switching between two, like switching context is, is difficult in itself, but mm -hmm. switching between clients, clients during, yeah. uh, there was a time I got myself into situations like that and it's, it's not great. Um, mm -hmm. You don't feel great if you uh, not drop a client, but don't give them um, uh, the best work or the best attention. Mm. Um, the tension they deserve, the pain you for. So mm. um, in, in the early days, I think you can take greater risks. Mm. Um, if, if your dependencies are low, if, if you don't, um, if you can get by by maybe losing a client yeah. um, or losing a contract or mm. um, and not being able to make or um, uh, uh, deliver all the work, Mm -hmm. um, resulting in a, a, a lesser of an invoice or whatever. If, if you can take that impact, then you can try more when you're young. That's mm -hmm. the great, the, the best time to try it. So to try it, when, yeah. when your dependents are low or your, your obligations are low. Um, um, but then as you as you become more involved with people, they expect more time of you. Um, mm -hmm. Caveat saying you must make sure they understand what, what they're getting. Um, but but yeah, you, you grow into long-term relationships with people and then you you kind of scope in your work a little bit. Um, I, I think if, if you're a, a, a one-person show um, and you're working for more than five to seven people on a regular basis, I don't think it's, it's going to be tricky to, um, to keep up. Unless you've gone into like website maintenance and management, if that's the service you're supplying, yeah. then you possibly need to have more clients on, on the payroll, mm. um, on a retainer or on a contract or whatever. Um, this field is so vast, you know. Um, yes. uh, there's, there's so many things you can do. Um, yeah. you, we, as, as developers, we, we write a lot of code. Uh, yeah. There's very seldom you just write the line or two and that's the job. Um, uh, but if, you, if I'm thinking of technical writers or QAs, um, I, I think it changes for everyone. Um, but yeah, I, th I think communication and transparency across the board, that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, making Definitely. sure they know what they're getting <laughs> and then you managing your risks as your, your career changes. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Um, so we have the final question, which is the tax implications, you know, like because the, the companies, they just give you the money, but um, the, I'm sure there's a tax you have to take care of by yourself. Um, can you just speak m in, into that? So I, I think the answer I want to give, and I'll, I'll try to get into some more detail with, with what I know, <laughs> um, uh, tax doesn't sit naturally um, uh, in, in a very understandable space in my head. I, I, well, I, I don't, the concept I don't mind. We're giving mm -hmm. back to 
um, supposedly a non-corrupt um, governing body. Yeah. Um, they, they distribute um, <laughs> yeah. for the um, for the social um, welfare of or the um, the upkeep of our company. So yeah. in that sense, I understand it. Yeah, fixing um, the light and the yeah. <laughs> Um, but the, the, the problem, the, the actual technical part of it, I've, I've mm. never been quite great at. Um, mm. So I think the first tax implication is you need someone to help you. Um, mm. uh, the, I, I'm sure there, there's some people that's um, uh, that's naturally good at um, wrapping their heads around this and they can do it by themselves. Yeah. But I don't think you want to with... Uh, you're going to want to be a person that um, promises something to a client and you want yeah. to deliver it better than you promised it. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you, um, word of mouth, and um, uh, helps you to get more work and mm -hmm. that's how you get a good reputation is um, delivering on your promises and then maybe they're that guy that they, you're that person they call um, because you did that little extra and um, you mm. paid that little extra attention of detail so mm. um when you're focused on that you don't want to be thinking of tax um mm. when you've wrapped up your day and you've done your other admin mm. you don't want to be thinking about that look it's not in a, a, a day by day um you're not sitting every day thinking about your tax but even after a two three month period um you've been um really busy with the project um then you might have gotten behind on, on the admin there. Yeah. So, um, but, but then getting into the nitty gritty, um, uh, you need to um, uh, keep good record of what you earn, what your expenses are. Yes. Um, uh, I, I worked very closely with a company, a local company that um, I, I use some ex additional software and that I import my bank statements in. Um, I uh, categorize my expenses. Um, they get a, a statement or a, a report of that. They use it to generate the necessary documentations for um, uh, for provisional um, the tax. Pay, yeah, for provisional tax. Um, and so it's it's definitely a collaborative effort between me and the the company that I work with. I've certainly had um, people that weren't great in the past, um, and that that's. <laughs> that's yeah. a deal breaker i've had to mm. pay penalties before because between me and the um uh, this the person that i worked with um we didn't understand our relationship properly there was communication issues and um uh, i feel at least i um i dropped the ball a little bit mm. um so I've, I've certainly paid some penalties in the past and then also building up the reserve there um uh you need to make sure that you you don't spend the money <laughs> you need to exactly. go exactly no, you have to give to the government. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and then over time, coming to understand it better, um, as you as your career grows, your um, your income will grow. Yes. Hopefully, if, if you're navigating your career well, um, then your tax bracket will change. You will pay a different percentage, um, and it, it the the impact on your income changes. So, mm. um, uh, so it's important to keep on top of it. But I would just say, for me, the biggest implication is work with someone. Um, like and, a tax uh, practitioner, someone yeah, that really yeah. understands the, the tax policies and all of that. Yeah. That can really and, help and as soon as you have the, um, uh, the understanding and, and um, the, uh, the routine of this, um, you need to just keep your reserves up um, mm -hmm. for this, um, ensure that you, ha you have the money to pay. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've, there was one very unfortunate situation where I completely got um, lost. Um, um, uh, I lost track of everything, and I had to release like a, um, a, a savings account um, and to, to pay tax, and uh, oh. that, that was a rough year. So um, <laughs> keep keep on top of it, but work with someone. I would say amazing amazing thank you very much like <laughs> that is actually that was the actual um, final um, question um do you have anything uh, like an advice or you know like that you can actually just give to our viewers um i th i think i've touched on it a little bit but attention to detail um i think if if i look at the feedback that i've gotten as a um as a service provider or as someone um, working with clients and customers and teams is um, that attention to detail, um, the willingness to, um, to maybe go that extra mile, yeah. um, uh, treating people well, um, and in, uh, being very um, 
open and honest. Um, people yeah. are very receptive of that, I believe. And mm-hmm. um, this might also change between industries. But if you if you have, if you're on a fixed term contract or um, or a fixed delivery contract, and you need to deliver something by by a certain time, if you notice three weeks in advance, listen, th- this is not uh, panning out that great. I'm probably not going to make delivery. Mm. communication is the key people will appreciate it and you might even get the next job mm. because you are known for communicating for, for us I, I, I believe you might um, uh, reckon the same um, in software we estimation is still a pretty big thing software mm. development is a new field it's compared mm. to things that have been there for decades and centuries yeah. Yeah. Um, so estimation isn't always on uh, exactly um we, we don't estimate perfectly mm. so if you say you're going to deliver the first of july or whatever um two weeks before that you realize this and it's going to run over communicate that um, mm. people appreciate it and um uh they they, they keep you longer for, for that um mm. and then your quality work pride in your work um i've i think this is something that people often say to me when i talk about uh, my work or when we just have a discussion on life and work-life balances, I really love what I do. Mm. So I think this might, um, uh, this can certainly translate to other industries, mm. but if you love what you do, um, and maybe if you don't, um, uh, pride in your work, yeah. th- th- that kind of drives everything else. Mm. Um, mm. And you want to say if you've made a mistake, you want to say if you misestimated, you want to say... Um, uh, where something isn't going great, or even advice to the client. Listen, um, I don't just want your money. I, I'm t- I kind of want to give you the advice that this approach is probably gonna um, cause you some hassles. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna. Um, I, I could have just gone and charged you for this piece of work that you requested, mm. but probably you don't need this. Um, mm. Advice like that is also very much appreciated. Mm. Um, look, you don't know you don't know every business that you pitch to. Um, mm. you, you might not be on top of everything, but from a technical perspective, um, uh, if if someone is looking to to spend on aesthetics only and yeah. and not on a functional um, piece of work, um, it, it's great maybe to tell them, listen, uh, if it's not going to work, it looks pretty. Um, you're probably not going to have um, customers for long. So mm. um, uh, uh, feedback is good. Some, sometimes you get battered and they'll say, listen, I, I wasn't asking for advice or opinion. Then that's also good. Um, mm. The next client is going to appreciate it. Um, yeah. And then uh, client, as as you grow, as you come to know how to do this, yeah. um, selecting your clients is also um, a, a pretty important thing. Um, selecting the wrong ones can get you stuck over the period that you understood you're going to be stuck. Um, but fortunately, I learned that by the first uh, agency that I worked, um, uh, I had a little primer there. So I, I was, I've always been very um, selective of people I work with. If, if you need that paycheck, listen, sometimes you're just going to take, take yeah, it. Just take it, man. <laughs> but, um, so you can uh, float. <laughs> but for sanity's sake, I would yeah. find it to, to, to read clients and to mm. know which ones to stay with. Mm, amazing amazing that was amazing thank you very much for your time no and, um yeah <laughs> thank you for your patience <laughs> okay. for, for for the second chance um, thank you for asking me i appreciate the opportunity yeah, yeah definitely definitely <laughs> um yeah you guys have you've had it and i hope you guys um received all the valuable information that you need to you know to make your decision as to if you want to be a permanent or you want to like switch to be an, an independent contractor and um, don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe also comment you know if you're in a different country and your you know the way the independent contractor works is it, it dif- it's different you know comment on the on the chat and um, we would actually take the time to respond to it and um, we'll see you in the next video um, keep well cheers <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,